I guess by now, every orchid lover should know that modern Phalaenopsis orchids that we get right now are heavily modified, patented by different individuals or companies, and all of them are results of polyploidy and hybridization. Therefore, none of them can be propagated naturally by seeds. They normally don't produce any seeds, and if they do, they are sterile. In vitro techniques of micropropagation of orchids from tissue cultures have been widely used for commercial purpose of mass production. It is asexual propagation with use of orchid stem cells. Another vegetative propagation method is known as monopodial stem division. These simple methods allow us, orchid lovers, to propagate our favorite orchids by dividing them into two plants. This method applies only to monopodial orchids like Phalaenopsis or Vonda orchids. Monopodile orchids grow as a single upright stem with one leaf following another on the opposite sides of the center. These orchids have no pseudobulbs and they store their water reserves inside the leaves and roots. At the base of the monopodile orchids, many types of orchid stem cells are found. Embryonic stem cells can develop and grow into leaves, roots, or flower spikes. Occasionally, however, monopodile orchids can start to multiply by themselves, developing a new shoot at the base of the plant. This new plant is called a basal cakey and should not be separated from the parent plant until a new baby orchid grows a sufficient root system, which will allow it to grow on its own. As we've shown in our previous videos, in cases of crown rot, where the root systems of the affected plants is strong, a basal cakey may form from the cluster of surviving stem cells inside the monopodial stem, and this allows the plant to continue growing leaves. Because of this, we should not give up hope too quickly on our Phalaenopsis orchids with crown rot. You can check out the link to this video in the description. But right now, I will show you how we can propagate orchids by dividing healthy, overgrown monopodile stems. This method cannot be applied to every orchid, and it's very limited, but it really works. The first step will be to choose the right plant for this. I'm going to choose a three to four year old orchid with large healthy leaves. There's supposed to be at least two or more pairs of leaves on each side, and it's better with younger leaves growing from the center. It's not recommended to use orchids with flowering spikes or during the blooming stage, and do not try this propagation method on sick, dehydrated, or infected orchids to avoid failure. The second step is to make sure that the specimen you want to divide has strong root systems just below the first pair of the bottom leaves, that there are at least some developed roots between the first and second pair of leaves, and that the roots are growing in a way that allows you to make a safe cut. I tied a red thread around the stem to mark for myself where I want to make the incision. If I have an orchid with only one healthy bottom leaf, I can try that one too, but the chances of successful recovery may be lower. So the orchid with two bottom leaves will likely have better outcomes. The third step will be to sterilize the scissors with 3% hydrogen peroxide or 70% isopropyl alcohol. Remember, hydrogen peroxide can only be used for instruments only, and I strongly advise against using hydrogen peroxide on wounds or leaves or roots of the orchids. Use of hydrogen peroxide on orchids can be extremely dangerous, and this is actually a very popular garden myth, and you can check out a video about this. The link is below. The next step is to carefully make a cut with your sharp scissors or your knife and ensure that you have at least two to three healthy roots attached to the top part. I need to apply some activated carbon or wood ash to the wounds. The bottom part of the orchid will stay in the pot undisturbed and will likely grow new leaves or basal cakey from the multiple clusters of stem embryonic cells located at the base of the monopodial stem. The last step is to plant the top part of your new orchid plant. For this purpose, I'm not going to use any terrarium or vases. Extra humidity may cause rotting problems because of this big fresh wound I made just by cutting the mother plant in half. This is a very big stress for orchids, so I need to be careful. This time I need a moderately dry substrate until the cut wound dries out and develops scars covered with this cork-like tissue. 
Wounded tissues of plants produce ethylene phytohormones that are responsible for producing these cork-like scars. Until then, I'm going to use hypnum moss instead of sphagnum to ensure lower moisture absorption and better structural air circulation. Instead of using a submerging watering technique, I'm going to stick to using spray bottles for around two to three months. It'll also be a good idea to tie up your orchid to a stick to prevent the orchid from falling out of the pot. I'm going to choose the best place for these orchids to grow with good lighting, temperature, and humidity to maximize my chances of success. And I will update you in a following video. So make sure to subscribe. <music>